Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will talk about the different types of SharePoint automation. There are lots of lots of different ways to do things in SharePoint and selecting which one is the best for this particular business case is maybe one of the hardest thing to do. So I'll go through the different options and show you some of the pros and cons of each of every one and explain what they are good for and bad for. So let's start with the two major types. First, there's the coding and the no coding. And there are lots of different types underneath each one of them. On my website, the tips section is usually focused on the non-coding versions. But what we do for our customers when we deliver solutions to them, we usually deliver coding solutions because of the trouble with non-coding solutions. We're happy to show customers how to do non-coding solutions. When we deliver something to customers, we usually go for a coding solution because we can support them and manage them in totally different ways. And also they give a lot more power. When you're coding with SharePoint, you're usually using the API. And there are two main branches of the API. There's the client side object model, and that's what you usually use. And it's built on top of SOAP. And there are C sharp variants of this. There are JavaScript versions. Those are the main ones, but they're all built on the same interface that we're calling so interfaces via different wrappers. So the client side object model allows you to do almost anything that you can do from the browser interface. And it's really, really powerful. If you are on premise, you can also use the server side object model. Uh, but as that implies, you need to be able to run code on the server. So that's not possible to do, of course, on SharePoint online and in most hosted environments. And it's also something that most IT departments frown upon having code running on the actual server. So the server side object model is not something that I would recommend using unless you have some specific needs. These are the APIs. And then you can, of course, decide which language you're going to use. One of those languages that is a really old one, but that I also want to mention that is rather simple to use is VBA. For example, if you want to do that loop through items in a list, which I described is really difficult to do in non-coding, maybe VBA. If you have the VBA skills, then looping through items in a list might be the solution for you. It's really easy to do in access with a few lines of code through. All right, there we go, of course. So that's one of the options. You can also change library properties. So VBA, this section is actually mostly about access. That's how I usually use VBA. But it can, of course, do PowerPoint or, or, or Excel automation that connects to SharePoint also. But VBA and access are, is the most powerful coding solution, which is very, very simple. There's also remote event receivers. You can register in a remote event receiver. And what happens there is that when something changes or happens on the SharePoint side, it will call out to a web-based service that you can register. The benefit of that is that it can happen synchronously. That is, if you want something to happen before an item is saved in the list, this is the only way to do it, to have a remote event receiver. There used to be event receivers on the server side that you can use also as part of doing sandbox solutions, but those are no longer supported, so I won't mention those. But remote events receivers is something you want to look into if you want synchronous event handling before someone is deleting an item, before someone is saving the item, you want to do certain verifications. So it's really powerful, but uh, way out of scope for most of my solutions. And I've actually never delivered a remote event receiver. So it's not something that I recommend. The other types of coding is uh, what we mostly do is PowerShell coding, having scripts run on a separate server or in an Azure function. That's really, really powerful. And usually we use another wrapper on top of the API, which is called uh, patterns and practices. So that's something that you really want to look into if you are doing coding solutions. This is the PowerShell PMP and CSAM solutions. Those are the ones that we usually sell to our customers. All right, so that's an overview of those different types of SharePoint automation solutions. And um, I hope that gave you some insight. Thank you for watching.